Now call on Deputy Tommy Braun. Uh, Twelve minutes. Uh, thanks, Gahir. Look, uh, well, as you probably agree, it, it was comical earlier on today listening to the response of uh, Deputy Michael McGrath and Fianna Fáil, still torn between uh, pretending to be an opposition party and indeed being a, a party of government. Of course, this government, it is a F uh, Fine Gael Fianna Fáil administration which has cobbled together today the 11th austerity budget, I make it, uh, since when in autumn 2008 Fianna Fáil began this decade of austerity and capped expenditure. Uh, I do, of course, wish to welcome some of the small restoration of payments seen in what is essentially a standstill budget. I sent in my own submission uh, to Ministers Noonan and uh, Donoghue, which outlined a number of measures I felt could have been included with even a reasonably extended fiscal uh, space, significantly be beyond the £1.2 uh, billion uh, in Budget 2017. Uh, the uh, Committee on Budgetary Oversight uh, of uh, report, of course, which was published recently, reflects many hours of meetings um, uh, and outlines members' views following the hearings on, in the fiscal context for Budget 2017, the risks, including the risks and opportunities for our economy, especially during and post Brexit, the amount of fiscal space, the need to ramp up capital expenditure, especially in housing, health, and education, the need for a new model of childcare and future strategies in taxation policy, including the forensic examination of tax expenditures, and the closure of tax avoidance loopholes such as Section 110, Qualifying Investor Alternative Investment Funds, the CRAFES and the Real Estate Investment Trust, uh, the rights. Uh, and of course I want to uh, thank our, our OPTA staff at the uh, Budgetary Oversight Committee um, and uh, indeed uh, Chairperson uh, John, uh, Deputy John Paul Phelan uh, for, the, for the hearings which were held. It was regrettable that we did not meet the key bodies in civic society uh, wh which made presentation to us as individual deputies and I hope that is something that will take place in 2017 for the 2018 budget. But let me clearly state, uh, Cahirlock, that I remain totally opposed to the continuing suffocating application of the EU budgetary rule with its expenditure benchmark, conversion margins, reference rate, debt rule and debt rule, which combine uh, to continue the austerity era cap on government expenditure, which we see again uh, today. Uh, I argue as forcibly as possible at the Committee that every effort should be made to limit the impact of the EU budgetary rule on 2017 spending, and that is particularly the case with regard to capital expenditure expenditure, which is still greatly constrained. In my own independent submission to Ministers Noonan and Dunhoo, I urge consideration being given to a few of the following uh, revenue-raising measures to expand the fiscal space to about three billion. Uh, for example, the introduction of a wealth tax on the wealthiest five percent of all households that was estimated last year to yield up to four hundred million. And uh, many leading economists, such as Thomas Piketty, Professor Thomas Piketty, and uh, Professor Joe Stiglitz and others, have said that it's the hallmark of an advanced country in the OECD that it would have a wealth tax uh, um, uh, as part of its revenue raising um, arsenal. I, I believe the restoration of the capital gains tax and capital acquisition, acquisition tax rates to 38 per cent would also have yielded an additional uh, 178 million. Uh, I also argued for an increase on stamp duty on shares from 1 per cent to 1.5 per cent, yielding an extra 220 million. That took place in the context of the discussion on the financial transactions tax, which Minister Noonan told the committee still, he's still not keen, on, still not keen on, on advancing, despite the fact of uh, 11 uh, OECD and EU partners uh, are moving forward with that tax. I believe the closing, uh, that closing section 110 and other tax avoidance loopholes and ensuring the effective rate of corporation tax is actually 12.5 per cent would significantly increase stable corporation tax revenues by estimates of anything from 650 million to 2 billion per annum. Uh, indeed, the effective rate seems to have increased over the past two years as Minister Noonan has at long last beginning be begun to introduce legislation to implement the, the BEPS programme. But it's disappointing that the Department of Finance in the uh, paper today in this budget estimates that section 110 and the funds changes and measures to tackle offshore, offshore tax uh, evasion will realise only 80 million. Uh, that's hard to believe uh, if the job was carried out properly by the department. Uh, I also call for an increase in the number of revenue commissioners uh, by an addition to 100 audit and compliance staff and I estimate that would produce an additional exchequer yield of up to 100 million per annum. Well the minister as you saw Coherlock has only provided for an additional 50 audit staff which he says by the way will yield uh, 50 million. Million. Although in the preparatory documents I had from Finance, uh, it, it indicated uh, it, that the yield would in fact be lower for, for uh, 50. So I also believe the Budget 17 it should have begun the process of equalising the rates of excise on auto fuels between petrol and diesel vehicle engines because of the, of the health dangers and health concerns about carcinogens in particular matters. Um, and uh, career, look, I'm, I, I drive a diesel myself, but I think that uh, the equalisation of, of those um, rates has occurred in Britain and Northern Ireland, and it's that we would move in the same direction. Uh, also, of course, the, the um, introduction of the sugar tax.
tax and the vacant site levy um, uh, perhaps could have been brought forward uh, to 2017. As my colleague Deputy Pringle has said, the increase in state pension and other weekly social welfare payments of uh, uh, five euros a week uh, is a welcome, tiny step, uh, but it's deplorable that the rise doesn't come into effect until March uh, next year. The increase from 75 per cent to 85 in the Christmas bonus is, is, is also an Ebenezer Scrooge-like increase for hard-pressed families. These increases represent expenditure of 301 million against a minimum package of at least 500 million, which I, I, I believe that the Minister should have brought forward, which would have included a, a more significant rise for pensioners of perhaps at least 7 euro. It's also regrettable that ch uh, child benefit hasn't been further restored, the child benefit cuts that we saw in recent budgets, uh, by perhaps at least another 5 uh, euro per child, and that family income supplement thresholds weren't increased by at least another 5 euro. Uh, uh, the, um, so, uh, given the risks to the Irish economy, the voice grip of the EU fiscal rules and the ongoing huge deficit in infrastructural uh, provision, major tax cuts and new tax expenditure should have been avoided, I think, in this budget. And I note that the Minister uh, Noonan says the budget package of 1.3 billion favours expenditure over revenue uh, reductions by a ratio of three, uh, 3 to 1. But some constituents do feel that reforms are necessary for the USC, uh, reforms but not abolition, Cahirlock. Um, and I, re uh, I recommended that the SIP2 uh, proposals for USC uh, should be uh, uh, proceeded with. Um, the cuts of USC, of course, of 0.5% at three lower rates uh, the uh, and the tiny increase in the 2.5 rate ceiling and other changes will cost the Exchequer 335 million. But the distribution analysis in Annex A of Minister Noonan's presentation shows tiny weekly gains of €2 Euro to €7 Euro for taxpayers and households earning below €55,000 uh, uh, a year. And Mr Noonan said, of course, that taxpayers uh, wouldn't be throwing their hats in the ring uh, or in the air today and, uh, uh, when they heard these, uh, this, these announcements on, on uh, tax cuts. And given these figures, they certainly won't be. But the so-called squeeze middle, the middle-ranking salary cohort of citizens and households, mm -hmm. do certainly deserve some easing of the impact, uh, the income tax burden in 2017. And a key initiative in this regard would have been to increase and widen the income tax standard rate uh, tax band, uh, or indeed to index uh, uh, bands, tax bands uh, and credits. Um, uh, but again, this is something uh, Minister Noonan and Minister Donoghue have avoided. Uh, Minister Noonan also wants to re-establish this rainy day fund from 2018 when the budget will be in surplus. Uh, but whatever about the merits of a rainy day fund, and we had of course before Minister McCreevy's uh, 1 billion euro savings, uh, which the country put aside, and then which was a lot of which was uh, immediately, unfortunately, um, uh, uh, put into the, uh, into the uh, rescue in the banks. Uh, but the parallel decision to now also aim for a debt to GDP ratio of 45% by 2025 seems completely incongruous in the context of the funding deficits in health, education, and the key national infrastructure. Of course, Ireland had a ratio now of 76% of debt to GDP, is well on our way to reaching uh, once again the 60% stability and growth pact goal. To address the un unmet needs of our health system, uh, including the move to in universal health care for all our citizens, uh, I, I believe that uh, it required an additional perhaps uh, 1, million, 1 billion uh, spending today uh, for the health budget in, uh, in uh, 2017, and le at least 100 million, uh, billion of this, uh, 100 million of this sorry, should have been allocated to intellectual disability services and good mental health uh, promotion and care for our children and younger citizens. But today, of course, Minister Dunhu announced a package for additional health spending of just under 500 million euros and trumpeted the fact that our under-resourced health system spending at 14.6 billion had reached the highest level in our history. Um, and, and I welcome things like the medical card coverage for all children uh, on, in disability, on the disability care allowance. But we know, uh, Herlock, that hospital waiting lists are now at an all-time high of 535,000 people waiting. Uh, your colleague, uh, Minister Harris, is, is the, the pilot on the bridge, or the captain on the bridge, uh, when we've reached that uh, disgraceful figure. Uh, and of course, there are no plans uh, in my own constituency in this budget for to immediately begin construction of a new A&E at Bowmont, or indeed for additional beds there, or at other key hospitals all across this country. Uh, on disability services, I received uh, briefings from St Michael's House, St John of God Services, Prosper Finn, uh, Finn Gaul, um, especially uh, uh, in the need for additional funding for placements for many young people, especially the 18 year old cohort which graduated uh, in 2015, and for additional capital and personnel resources. I estimate the further provision of these services in Dublin Bay North and the other uh, 40 constituencies would cost at least around 100 million. So I look forward to hearing how Minister McGrath achieved this uh, 100 million uh, later on this evening or tomorrow. Uh, Minister Donoghue rightly calls uh, education the bedrock of our society, but the additional spending of 458 million in this budget, as 
colleagues have just said, is almost totally needed just to meet our democratic needs. And it's disappointing that no major initiative was taken in relation to the PTR, pupil teacher ratio, the capitation grants um, at first and second, uh, first level in particular. And the recently published action plan, we've had an action plan from your colleague again, Cahir uh, and the Minister's colleague, uh, Deputy Bruton, uh, action plan for education. But when you go through it, of course, uh, where's the costings and where's the money in the budget today? Not a sign of any of, uh, of, any of that as the uh, uh, into, into trade union uh, has rightly said. Uh, I agree with the uh, Irish Congress of Trade Unions pre-budget submission uh, that over the medium term funding for, funding for education should be at least the equivalent of 7% of our GDP. The Union of Students in Ireland uh, made a powerful case to me for the investment of an additional 140 million in the higher education sector but the ministers today have only allocated an extra 36.5 uh, million uh, and they talked about this exchequer employer investment funding mechanism whatever on earth that means. Uh, uh, Look, your guess is as good as mine. I also supported uh, Bernardo's campaign for an additional 142 million for high quality affordable childcare for all families, which includes the introduction of the uh, childcare subsidy uh, to support parents of the under threes and further support for the ECHE programme. Um, the rise in early years funding of 120 million is therefore welcome, including the extra 86 million for the ECHE scheme and for the pre school scheme. All the meetings, of course, of the Budgetary Oversight Committee. Here, look, uh, deputies, whatever it is, the 15 deputies, we were completely, I think, at one on, on one particular issue, and that was the need for additional capital spending. Uh, and the fact that, as uh, I think it was Professor Macdonald of Neary told us, that capital spending in this country um, is now below the depreciation, below our active depreciation rate of 2% of GDP. That's an unsustainable situation, and unfortunately, when, when we examine the capital budget in detail, it's going up now to uh, 4.5 uh, billion um, uh, for 2017. But it's still within the range of, if you like, 2% of GDP. It's still not enough. And if you look across the key areas of investment in housing, uh, in education, uh, and in transport, and all the other areas of infrastructural deficits, uh, you'll find this huge gap. My colleagues ha have mentioned that the Help to Buy Housing Scheme uh, won't uh, really address uh, the, the huge problem that young couples have due to the macroprudential rules, the application of the macroprudential rules, uh, which Minister Noonan has a responsibility which he's dodged to ask the Governor of the Central Bank to rectify. Uh, I wanted a much bigger programme for, uh, of spending for social housing as well, uh, uh, Look, and I note that of the additional, uh, the extra 15,000 house, households availing of HAP in 2017 seems to be key, the key element of meeting the household needs of 21,000 housing applicants. Uh, so in conclusion, um, uh, I, I believe that um, the uh, Fianna Fáil, uh, Fine Gael and the Independents, they could have sig significantly expanded fiscal uh, space to give better protection for our most vulnerable citizens and to invest in health, education and housing. Thanks for her look.